Welcome back to the Bookly Podcast, where this week's episode is First They Killed My Father by Luang Ung. How much do you actually know about the Cambodian genocide? I'm sad to say that I knew almost nothing about this event prior to about two weeks ago when I read this book. And I feel like that's just another failure on our education system. The fact that I knew nothing about an event that killed an estimated 2 million people, one fourth of Cambodia's total population at the time is insane. When reading this book, it really got me thinking about the Vietnam War, the cause and effect of that war, and also if there's anything that we could have done to avoid all of that death. Now, before we continue, make sure that you like this video, leave me a comment, let me know if you knew anything about the Cambodian genocide, and make sure to subscribe to this channel so you can continue to learn from the books that we read every single week. Before reading this book, my thoughts on the Vietnam War were kind of all over the place. In the United States, there was an entire movement, this counterculture movement, that completely opposed the Vietnam War. And personally, I tend to lean more towards kind of an anti-interventionist policy. I think that sometimes we overcommit to being involved in other people's affairs, and a lot of that effort and money can be more well spent here solving some of the problems that we have domestically. I've also read a couple books and listened to a lot of podcasts from individuals who were in the Vietnam War, and those stories are crazy. If you ever want to hear some of the craziest stories from special forces or soldiers in wartime, listen to podcasts and read books about people in the Vietnam War. I have a ton of respect for individuals who served their country during this time. So I've always remained kind of conflicted about it. On one hand, you want to thank and support those individuals who serve. On the other hand, there's a large portion of people who believe that we never should have been in the Vietnam War to begin with. And this is kind of where I lined up personally in kind of my thoughts about the Vietnam War. However, this book kind of shook those beliefs a little bit. So after this book, I did a little bit more research of the timelines of the Vietnam War and how that progressed into Cambodia, as well as some of the theories behind why we were so adamant about fighting North Vietnam. Now, President Eisenhower at the time had a theory called the domino theory. This theory was that if we allowed communism to come into and take hold of Vietnam, that other surrounding countries would eventually fall like dominoes to communism. Now the History Channel's website ultimately says that the domino theory has been proven false. Specifically, they state, in the end, even though the American effort to block a communist takeover failed and North Vietnamese forces marched into Saigon in 1975, communism did not spread through the rest of Southeast Asia, with the exception of Laos and Cambodia. To say that the domino effect was not true, I feel like you have to look at the effects of the spread of communism, even though it only spread into two different countries, Laos and Cambodia. Now, after the US withdrawal from Vietnam, with the support of the North Vietnamese armies, the Khmer Rouge was eventually able to push its way all the way to Phnom Penh, surround the city and take over and install Pol Pot as the communist leader of Cambodia. And this is what began what we now call the Cambodian Genocide, in which an estimated 2 million people or one fourth of Cambodia's total population died as a result of this communist takeover. So when looking just at the numbers, it was kind of hard for me personally to, to completely dismiss this idea of the domino effect in which President Eisenhower was worried that communism would spread across Southeast Asia and have negative consequences. Two million people dead is a pretty staggering negative consequence. For reference, the bloodiest US war in history was the Civil War, in which 620,000 people died. The Cambodian genocide resulted in more than three times as many deaths. And reading this book really gave me a glimpse into the horror, the overall tragedy and just the complete terror that existed in Cambodia during this time. It was really eye-opening. I truly feel that this book should be read by everybody, just to give you a little bit of perspective of what that was like. Now, after reading this book, I began to question, was the war in Vietnam worth it? And should we have continued to push communism completely out of that area? Because there's an argument to be made that had we eliminated communism in Southeast Asia, we could have prevented a genocide of 2 million individuals. Hindsight's 2020. We never really know if that actually would have happened. However, it made me question if the public had been able to grasp the severity of the situation and what was on the line for people in that region, would the result have been different? 
It's really hard to say, but when reading a book like this, it just makes me think, what could we have done to protect those people, to avoid this situation? Now, there is a counter argument to be made that I do also want to highlight, and that is that during the Vietnam War, the US dropped a crap ton of bombs in Cambodia. Now, there are a lot of different opinions as to why these bombs were dropped in Cambodia, but when I say a crap ton of bombs, I mean an estimated 500 tons of bombs were dropped in Cambodia during the Vietnam War, resulting in more than 100,000 civilian casualties. And throughout history, I think the US has done a pretty good job of creating its own enemies. A lot of the actions of war have been credited to radicalize other groups and create support for some not so friendly groups. And this could have been a factor in the rise of the Khmer Rouge in Cambodia. Because of the bombings, there was an increased support for the Khmer Rouge and more and more individuals joining the forces that eventually fed the large force that took over Phnom Penh. So did the Vietnam War provide the fuel for the Communist Party to take over Cambodia? Or did the US have the ability to stop this genocide, but pulled out of the conflict before they were able to? These are questions that we will never really have an answer to. However, I do think it's important that we take a look at historical events like this to understand the consequences of our actions. And I have to say that this book, First They Killed My Father, is a very good window into the consequences of the Cambodian genocide. It paints a picture of this catastrophe from the perspective of a young girl watching her family be murdered by the Khmer Rouge. It is a phenomenal book, and I would give it a 4.5 out of 5 overall as a book, and I would highly recommend that you read it, especially if you don't know anything about the Cambodian genocide. But even if you do, it's also a unique perspective because it comes from the viewpoint of a child. If you'd like to hear my entire breakdown of this book, make sure to check out this episode of the podcast, and make sure that you like, comment, and subscribe to this video, and turn on notifications so that you never miss an episode of the Bookly podcast, and then make sure to join Join us next week for the coddling of the American mind. Thanks and see you then.